about that? Because I guess the whole, you know, kind of shtick about Uber is that they're not, you know, they're not a profitable company, right? That's kind of like the general, this is a company that's been losing money forever. Um, but, you know, I guess kind of like when I started breaking down the numbers, like on the ride side, they are profitable, it looked like, right? Right. So they, they break out rides profitability um, separate from eats, separate from self-driving car, separate from other bets. And then they have kind of a, a platform GNA and technology cost line mm-hmm. item. Um, so mm-hmm. on a consolidated basis, they lose money. You know, the bulk of that loss, I guess, is coming from eats. Rides, rides unit economics are positive in that, you know, the entire business of of rides is making a positive contribution margin um, even before you take out, um, well, I guess I should say, the the past two quarters before this quarter, even if you backed out all of the uh, the, the cost from the general corporate, mm-hmm. the, the GNA and the tech platform R&D, the last two quarters, you know, just the rides business could um, absorb all the costs from the, the general corporate overhead. Um, but I mean, it definitely shows that the unit economics are positive for the business. Um, and then I guess this quarter, it dipped slightly below that. I think the reality is, you know, some of that GNA and tech platform R&D should be allocated to rides, some should be eats. And, it, you know, I think pretty much whatever way you slice it, um, the rides business is, is profitable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as a percent of GMV, what they're looking to make is a very small amount. And, you know, each quarter it's kind of coming in as like a, a just, you know, I think this quarter total adjusted EBITDA was, you know, negative 4%, a little under negative 4% of GMV. So like they lose on, on aggregate entire adjusted EBITDA a little bit of the entire price customers are paying. And they're looking to make, you know, like 8% over time. Gotcha. What's uh, GMV? So uh, I guess I, I, they call it gross bookings, but just the, the aggregate amount customers gotcha. pay. So, so, you know, if you think about it, yeah, so I, I think so, for example, like in the first quarter of 2020, they said that gross bookings grew to $15.8 billion. That's the number that that's basically all the money that they're taking in from customers, right? Yeah, that's right. And then what was the other term that you were uh, mentioning off of that? So the, the way that the business model works is um, like if I have an example over here of like a, a $13 ride, which is probably pretty standard for U.S. ride share um, of that. You know, they, they might take like a, you know, mid 20s cut, something like mm-hmm. that. Um, so Uber would take, um, you know, a little over three dollars. The driver would get a little under ten dollars. Um, there, there'd be some tolls and, yeah. you know, taxes and fees that mixed in there. Um, so the 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 thirteen dollars would be the gross bookings. Mm-hmm. That's what they'd be recording there. The Uber's take would be um, their adjusted net revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's what they're recording as revenue. So when when most people talk about margins, they're talking about as a percent of Uber's cut. So as a percent of the twenty five percent that they're taking, you know how much should they be making from there? And so you know they actually break out their take rate. I mean, you could calculate it just as adjusted net revenue of the rides business divided by rides gross mm-hmm. bookings. And they have a presentation where they break it out and you know show you. I think it's you know it's in the low twenties. Um, and um, yeah, and, and you know from the you know call it low to mid twenties um, take rate that they that they that they take in the U.S. They have to pay from that insurance costs, which are probably a little over a dollar a ride. Mm-hmm. Might be a, like a dollar twenty. Um, so I'll, you know, I was saying on a thirteen dollar ride, Uber's getting like a little over three dollars. They're paying a dollar of that just like right out the back yeah. to insurance. Uh, it's, it, you know, it's really just more like a pass through. And then they're paying Visa and Mastercard and the, the payment stack another uh, I don't know thirty nine forty yeah. cents something like that. Um, and so like net each ride Uber left in the U S probably take like a dollar 66, something like that. So like a, a, a real net net take rate of, you know, low teens. Gotcha. So they're taking, yeah. yeah. So I think I'm, I'm looking at the uh, PowerPoint they, they have and on, the, I guess on their adjusted net revenue, they have a 22.8%. Uh, I guess that's a take rate, right. On adjusted net revenue. Yeah. So 
let me see if I can explain this correctly. So 22, this is kind of like, you know, I feel like I'm back in school again. Okay, so <laughs> it's like, Harry, now you need to explain it. Okay, uh, so 22.8% is their take rate. So that's of the, that's basically the percentage that they're taking of the gross bookings, right? Correct. And then of that 22.8%, I guess the amount is $2.475 billion. So that's kind of that percentage turned into dollars. Um, of that, you know, some money is going to insurance, some money is going to Visa and MasterCard, and then they're left with the rest, basically. They're left with the rest. I was calling that kind of like a net net take rate, just to kind of point out that like, you know, a lot of people think that their take rate's high, but really there's a lot of pass through items that kind of bring it down to a... Yeah. Um, at kind of like a low teens rate, which is pretty standard across all 3P marketplaces. Um, and then below that, to get down to this adjusted EBITDA, they're also going to pay, you know, sales yeah. and marketing, which is a huge expense. So I don't know if we'll be able